We have gotten so many requests to make Grandma Florence's chicken that we decided we would put together a short little video and hopefully um, show everyone how easy it is and you be the judge of how delicious it is and then let us know. So we're going to start, uh, I'm going to um, pass this over to Barbara and then she can start walking us through how to get it, how to get it prepared. What I've done and what Barbara and I have done is we've already cut up all our potatoes, our um, onions, smashed up the garlic. We have everything ready that we need, all the seasonings, the salt and pepper, uh, granulated garlic as well. And we love this seasoning, the organic no salt seasoning um, that we get from Costco. It adds a really wonderful, uh, rich flavor. And you don't need a lot of it either. No. And then I know a lot of people love fresh vegetables, but in this particular recipe, the only piece that we think work well are the ones our grandmother used, and they're the Lasor, uh, very young, tender peas. Uh, we love them. You could use frozen peas too, but the ones in the can from Lasor just have the special flavor that we grew up on. So, having said that, I'll let Barbara go through the, uh, the steps. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drizzle some oil in the bottom of the pan, just a little bit. And it's olive oil, extra olive virgin oil. olive oil. I'm gonna take the cut up and quartered potatoes. We used a combination of uh, young red potatoes and some Yukon gold. If you can get the ones that are really small and young, those are perfect because you don't have to cut them, you just have to wash them and throw them in whole. Unless they're a little too big, then just cut them in half. But these are all, you know, nice sized pieces. Then I'm going to take the onions and throw the onions in here. And then I'm going to take the mashed garlic. We like to smash the garlic for this one because you get more of the flavor of the garlic. And the more the better. Yes. And then I'm going to take more oil, olive oil, and I'm going to coat all of the potatoes and the onions and the garlic. I'm going to give it a good coat because we want these to... Uh, caramelize and, and really cook nicely. Now, we're making a double batch today because our families, there's gonna be um, five of us all together. So we're making 10 pieces of chicken, that, 11, 11 <laughs> pieces, and they won't all fit in this pan. So we're going to cook the potatoes and everything in here. We're gonna start it here, then we're gonna transfer it to, to another, another pan, pan, and we're gonna split the chicken between the two of them. So now, I'm going to, uh, if you have a, um, a yeah, a, no, a, a little spatula, so I can turn this with, or a wooden spoon, it doesn't matter. I have lots of wooden spoons. Okay, so I'm going to mix this up and make sure everything is coated. And if I have to add a little bit more olive oil, I will. It's a good idea to protect it when you're doing this because they have been known to fly out of the pan. <laughs> And you don't want to waste floor, yes. any of it. Nor do you want to have to clean up the floor. Right. So I think I might just add another little bit of a drizzle. Okay. Now I'm going to take some salt and I'm just going to sprinkle it in. That helps the onions start to lose some of their moisture. And I'm going to take the Kirkland Organic No Salt Seasoning. And I'm gonna lightly sprinkle it because this is very flavorful and you don't need a lot. So I'm just gonna give it a little sprinkle. That should do it. And I'm gonna mix it up. And then this is gonna go in the oven for about 20 minutes. In between that time, I will stir these and give them you know, a, a turnover and a good mix up because you want them to all get uh, easily starting to caramelize. So that's it, we're going to put it into a 400 degree oven and then we'll be back uh, when we're ready to separate them and start the baking with the, or roasting with the uh, chicken. Pan goes into the oven on the top rack. Uh, it's the middle, middle section, but on that top middle section. And it will stay there, like Barbara said, for about 20 minutes. Okay. Hi, we're back to show you how to prepare the chicken. We're going to season it. Uh, I've already done that, but I'm going to go through the steps. 
First, take a little bit of olive oil and drizzle it on the bottom of the pan. And after you've done that, take your chicken pieces, your thighs, and put them um, fat side down. Skin Once, side down. Skin side down, fat side, skin side, same thing. Once mm -hmm. they're down, you're going to drizzle a little bit more olive oil over it, and then with your hands, just kind of, you know, pat it to, to rub it in. And that will get the meat uh, prepared, ready to take the seasoning and have the seasoning stick. Then once that's done, okay, then you're going to take um, salt and just give it a nice helping of salt, uh, as much or as little as you like, depending on your health preferences. Um, a little bit of ground black pepper, which we already did, some garlic powder just sprinkled across everything, and again, the, um, the organic no salt seasoning that you're going to just sprinkle all over everything again as well. Once that's done, it's ready um, to go into the other pan once the potatoes and the onions are ready. And so like for now, we're just keeping this in this pan uh, ready to transfer it as soon as the potatoes and onions are done. And we'll be back as soon as that's ready to uh, transfer. We season, just, just as a note, we season the second time the other side once the pan has oh, been right. cooked for the first, maybe first 20 minutes. When we turn the chicken, then we season the other half. Okay, we're back. Um, these have caramelized, they started to caramelize really nicely. So what I'm doing now is I'm dividing the pan because we are putting this into two separate pans because we have doubled the recipe. My, uh, half of it is gonna go into the one pan. Oh gosh, they smell so good. It does, mm. it smells delicious. I can't wait to eat tonight. <laughs> mm. Mm, get those onions in there. I know, I don't wanna miss anything for the other batch. No, I don't <laughs> want you to. Okay, that's about half. What about those onions? Yes, <laughs> those onions. Don't be cheap on the onions. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is in the one pan, I'm going to spread these off to the side like this. Okay, we'll just move this to the side. Now I'm going to put in, I'm going to put in the chicken pieces skin side down now we've already seasoned the backs of the chicken so that's going to go skin side down and say try not to hit my face with the spoon <laughs> <laughs> i'll try okay let's see i'm going to get that off of there let me just oops get some in over there So we'll just surround the bowl, the pan, with all these good this is uh, hot, so be onions and here. peppers. Peppers, there's no peppers. Oh, not peppers, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's a different dish, I know, Barbara. that's a different dish. We're gonna, <laughs> with the onions, the garlic, and the potatoes. Peppers, potatoes, they start with a pea, so. That's where my thought was. All right, so that's good. We're, uh, we're ready to put these in the oven and bake for about, I'm gonna say we're gonna bake them for about 20 minutes, but we are gonna check them. Yeah, so sometimes it takes a little longer, so we'll just check. And it depends if you have really small ones or if you have the ones that don't have the bone, they're gonna cook much quicker than the ones with the bone in. So um, just keep an eye on the chicken. And when they're halfway cooked, uh, we're gonna flip them over and then we're gonna continue cooking on a higher temperature. All right, would you open the oven? Yes, please? I will. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, you can see that we took, after 20 minutes, we took the first pan out of the oven, we flipped the chicken, and you can see how much the chicken coagulated so there's more space in there now. So we're gonna put it back in the oven and we're going to let it cook for about another 20 minutes. Uh, we're going to raise the temperature to 375. And, 475. I'm sorry, 475 and to give it a little extra crispiness. And then the last five to 10 minutes, we're gonna throw in the peas. So we will be back. 
Okay, everyone, we're back. Our chicken is looking great and potatoes and um, onions. So we are going to now add the peas. We'll, uh, we'll add two cans to each of the pans, just sprinkling it in all over nice and even. Okay, one more here. Do you have any comments here, Barbara? No, nope, I'm just gonna stir this up. Do you wanna add a little liquid? Because these didn't have too much liquid in them. What do you think, um, a little bit? We could add a little bit of liquid in there. All right, this was some of the reserved pea juice um, from the cans of Lasor peas, and it looks like it could use just a touch, maybe a couple. I, of, I don't know. I don't you think. So. Yeah. All right, check this one. That's it. No, maybe not. No, I don't think so. Looks I good. So we don't need to add it. Okay, great. Just nice. get this all mixed up yeah, here. I'll get that from this side. Okay. And in the meantime. I'm going to put this back in. All right, and we'll put these in for probably 10 minutes. Yeah, five to 10 minutes. Five we'll to just... 10 minutes, just to get the peas nice and hot. Okay, so we're going to let that um, roast cooking. for the next um, 10, 10 to 15 minutes, and then we'll be back uh, as we plate it and show you what it could look like when it's all plated, okay? Okay, so here's our platter. Mm -hmm. um, with the chicken in the middle, and we plated it up like this, and we are ready to serve dinner. We it hope you enjoy smells it. wonderful. I wish mm. you could smell it. It's absolutely amazing. So if you do try this, please let us know what you think, okay? Thank you. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.